In every chess game, for every white set of pieces, there must be an opposing black set, another person to challenge your every move, another person to make victory that much more painful, making it even more satisfying when it is reached, and all the more crushing if it escapes. In Breaking Bad, this second set of pieces is none other than the mastermind Gustavo Fring. Throughout the Breaking Bad universe, Gustavo Fring often poses many problems, always seeming to be numerous steps ahead of his many enemies. He creates an omnipresent threat, amplifying the fear of going against his demands. It is through Gustavo's calculated approach of always being multiple steps ahead, where many fans of the Breaking Bad universe are captivated and enthralled by his antagonistic qualities. To augment our understanding of what makes Gustavo Fring one of the most compelling antagonists in fiction, we must delve and dissect his multifaceted demeanor and how he leverages this to create a distinct power dynamic through his lingering presence. Almost no villain is a villain without a reason. Every villain possesses what many may refer to as an origin story or an explanation as to why they went down the path they did. These origins are crucial as they make villains relatable and perhaps even sympathetic, creating a more dimensional and in-depth story, blurring the line between good and evil. In Breaking Bad, this is an extremely common theme, where the line between good and evil becomes increasingly blurred as the series progresses. Take, for example, Walter's first interactions with Hank and the drug dealing business. It is first presented that Hank is on the good side of the law, and those who deal in drugs are criminals who deserve to be caught. While this mostly holds true in the real world, as we all know as watchers of Breaking Bad, this becomes less and less obvious as most of us find ourselves rooting for Walter at one point in the series or another. Whether his actions are truly justified is not so clear cut, but one thing we can all agree on is that, in the eyes of the law, they are not. With Gus, it is made clear by the show's perspective that he is to be seen as the villain at all times. There is never a moment where Gus is seen as a clear ally to Walter, our main character, and seen as someone to be trusted. Gus is terrifying in almost all of his scenes on the show, creating a clear villain. However, we must ask, why is he this way? What events could lead to the production of someone so frightening? Hence, we must look at Gus's origin story and see why it makes him such a terrifying villain. Firstly, let us take a look at Gus's motive as a villain. That is his driving force and what compels him to complete his goals. Villains aren't really villains without a goal or message to send, as even the most unhinged villains, like the Joker in The Dark Knight, seek to prove a point. Gus's motivation takes the form of a classic revenge story. We are treated to a flashback of Gus's friend, Max, getting killed by Hector Salamanca during a business meeting where the cartel suspected Gustavo of being manipulative. Giancarlo's acting truly sets the stage to his vengeance and convinces us, the audience, that he will stop at nothing to achieve his revenge for these events. Therefore, we see that one of the main factors contributing to Gus's success as a villain is none other than the actor's portrayal of the character. Giancarlo's acting prowess is simply phenomenal, showcasing his dynamic range and perfectly demonstrating the duality of Gustavo Fring. Back to the point though, this beautifully acted scene makes clear the pain and hurt caused to Gus, creating a layer of understanding towards his later actions. Furthermore, we see just how much fuel was given to Gus as a character and see how strong his motivation must be towards dethroning the cartel and constructing his own meth empire to avenge his most trusted friend. It seems like a way to live up to Max, as now that he is dead, Gus feels like the only way to honor him is through his complete domination over the Empire and to do his friend justice. Furthermore, Los Poyos Hermanos, translating to the Chicken Brothers, shows that Gus still considers his friend alive in spirit and with him, showing how Gus is posthumously motivated by his friend and uses him as motivation in every aspect of his life, including his villainous escapades. Fantastically explored in the anecdote given in Better Call Saul, the true intentions and cunning nature of Gustavo Fring is revealed when Hector is in an extremely vulnerable condition, specifically in a coma. Within this scene, Gus recounts a story of how when he was growing up there was a tree within his neighborhood, which he really wanted to collect fruit from. Time after time he would see the fruit and saw it, it was very appealing and fantasized about taking it down from the tree and as such he became fixated on it. 
throwing the tree out and making sure it would be ripe for his taking. Unexpectedly, one day the tree was stolen from by a variety of different animals from his village. As such, this resulted in Gus staying up all night to catch the animals in the night to prevent them from eating from his tree. All in all, this anecdote given by Gus serves as one of his most chilling reminders of what his end goal is. Power. By creating an analogy between the fruit of the tree and the power as a whole, and by implicitly revealing his nature to his enemy, it shows how open Gus is, and yet again creates this level of fear in which we can see the ever so determined means of a man set on his goal, with nobody in line to stop him. In doing so, this simple yet delicate scene gives an everlasting impression on what makes Gustavo work the way he does. An innate need for power and control but at the same time his transparent but bold nature, professing his distaste to his enemies and marking his territory as clearly as possible. Throughout the Breaking Bad universe, we often attribute Gus's ability to his rational decision making, which causes him to always be numerous steps ahead of whomever he's facing. Through the suppression of his emotions, fans are often left perplexed and in sheer mystification of Gus's ethics and morality. We often see Gus commit seemingly righteous actions, such as calling an ambulance to save Hector Salamanca's life amidst his life-threatening stroke, making Gus on the surface appear humane and helpful, which creates a false sense of security amongst his enemies. It's through this ambiguity of his true intentions where Gus becomes most dangerous. Instead of letting his most hated enemy, Hector Salamanca, die, he would rather keep him alive to psychologically torture him through killing all of his beloved family and cartel members, showing his immense control and autonomy over his emotions. Gus specifically chooses to not take the easy route in simply letting his greatest enemy, Hector Salamanca, die of his stroke, and instead decides to save his life. This makes him seem like someone who wants to keep Hector Salamanca alive and is loyal to him, but it masks his true intentions of hoping to keep him alive to cause him even more pain in the future. Therefore, we can see Gus's ability to portray himself favorably in front of his enemies while still secretly accomplishing his goals. Villains are never scarier than when their motives are relatable to us, the viewer. When you can feel yourself sympathizing with a villain. When you can feel the line between good and evil getting more and more blurred, my ass off to get where I am. I committed my life to this. It really makes you question what truly makes a villain. Is it perspective? Is it motivation? Is it goals? If any character has made you feel this sensation, it's a sign that they are a brilliantly written and acted out villain, and instead of being shamed for relating evil actions to everyday humans, they are praised for how humane and realistic they are, therefore making them even scarier. When understanding the power exerted by Gustavo Fring, one must understand the Machiavellian scheming employed by Fring to extend his exertion of power. As Machiavelli best put it, he who wishes to be obeyed must know how to command. Hence, when Vince Gilligan wrote the character of Gustavo Fring, it was important for him to write not just a physically powerful villain, but rather a villain that is intelligent, who can pose a mental threat to Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. This power of intelligence manifests itself in how we the viewers become accustomed to understanding how Gus is always one step ahead of the rest. Gus is seen time after time being one step ahead of the rest by managing to dissect down our two protagonists by their fatal flaws. One prime example of this is how Gus is able to exploit Jesse's naive personality to divide Jesse from Walter, to thereby run the cooking operation all on his own. Not only does Gus masterfully build upon Jesse's insecurity of being treated as the inferior choice between Walter and Jesse, but Gus also manipulates Jesse into building a false sense of leadership by working with Gale to not only extract information from Jesse and Walter's operation for his own benefits, but to also create a controlling power dynamic where he can hold something against Walter. This fork-like chess move, which applies pressure to all parties from the perspective of Gus, shows how methodically he runs his operation to monger a greater sense of power against his colleagues, whether it be fellow cartel members or Walter White or Jesse Pinkman. All in all, this strategic deployment of manipulation results in the status quo amongst the characters within the show, which makes everyone, including us, 
the viewers to believe that Gus is undefeatable. Another example of Gus's almost lucky nature comes when he does not walk into an already rigged car set up by Walter and Jesse. This almost divine-like intervention by Gus allows for us to become a lot more frustrated in the viewpoint of our two characters as no matter what they seem to do, they just cannot beat him, which creates this terrifying feeling where we start to believe there might not be an end to this madness. Hey, your distribution chain collapses. Without us, you have nothing. Yet, at the end of the day, all of this can be attributed to the fact that Gus is generally a more intelligent villain that does not reveal much and does not provide any further indication in terms of what he is planning, essentially becoming a secretive tactician. Extending past Breaking Bad, Gus is seen throughout the entirety of Better Call Saul to be solely working on a revenge arc to get back at the cartel for what they did to his friend Max. This character arc is both the most personal we get to see Gus, IT IS PERSONAL! and weakest we get to see him before he comes back stronger in Breaking Bad. Nonetheless, with that being said during this character arc, we can see how Gus is wired to be a very observational and manipulative character with the usage of characters like Nacho in the form of cartel moles to serve as his puppet and do his bidding, collect information and ensure that he is always able to maintain an upper hand over the Salamancas while still seemingly being on the same side as them. All in all, due to Gustavo Fring's high level of intelligence and emotional understanding, we can see that Gus is one of the most manipulative characters within the universe of Breaking Bad, with him being able to control whoever he so chooses to be a dominant figure through and through, with a seize on power incomparable to others within the show's entire run. Another large part which contributes to Gus's success as a villain is his extremely calm and collected exterior when it comes to dealing with problems which allows him to balance a lot of his charisma and emotionless demeanor to create a more intimidating on-screen presence. This sharp ability to be stoic during troubling times makes it all the more impactful when he loses his cool, making him snap and become a lot scarier than other characters in the show, and all of pop culture. Some key examples of this dual personality comes in the form of the murder of Victor, and his use of verbal threats, such as Gus's iconic, I will kill your infant daughter. All of these actions indicate a great control of his emotions and an overall lack of empathy, which is amplified by his constant cool demeanor, making these moments more surprising and scary. This sort of split personality of Gustavo Fring is seen all throughout pop culture media when looking at a certain group of villains. To start with, when we look at Gustavo Fring's personality, we can see a lot of similarities between him and other very popular villain characters in media, some notable examples being Homelander from The Boys and Terence Fletcher from Whiplash. The reason why these villains are so great and considered some of the media's greatest is mainly due to the fact that they are extremely unsettling characters. They're not always overtly scary, like some characters. Instead, they carry a very suspenseful aura around them, as all viewers and all the characters around them watch as they are aware that they could break in any moment's notice, but they don't seem to be. This mystery as to whether they're plotting something or not plotting anything at all creates another level of depth to them that makes them all the more scarier. Moreover, the reason why these villains are all the more memorable are mainly due to the fact that they are levels ahead of the lunatic type villains which are so equally present in Breaking Bad, such as Tuco. In Breaking Bad, Tuco always comes off as crazy, which is still very unsettling and scary but to a different effect. We still can't really predict what he'll do next, but it's in a different fashion since he's a lot more unhinged, whereas someone like Gus comes off as a lot more calculated, debatedly making him a bit more intimidating. So while someone like Tuco is always crazy and therefore scary, someone like Gus is scary because we don't know when they will snap and we don't know how. He's so intelligent that we fear both his intelligence and his ruthlessness, while with Tuco we seemingly just fear his ruthlessness. 
When villains can create a misleading aura of calmness around them, this lures the viewers and even the characters around them in the show into a false sense of security. This feeling of calmness makes us feel comfortable, which makes these moments of villainy really catch us off guard and seem all the more scarier. You want Chelsea? I think you should jump. I don't think I want to. Jump. Please, I get I'm not down. suggesting anymore. Jump. One of the major reasons why Gus is seen as someone with this impenetrable exterior is mainly due to the fact that Gus operates very secretly, adding to this air of mysteriousness, which only complements his cold and calculated persona, seen in the form of his ability to separate his work with Los Poyos Hermanos to his drug cartel work. It only goes on to illustrate the duality of Gus and how easily he can switch his personality and demeanor to match the tone of his environment. The reason why this becomes intimidating is that it demonstrates how Gustavo himself has control over his emotions and is able to access these different personalities on demand to create the villain which is needed within that moment in time. This proves how as a whole Gustavo is very strategic, yet unpredictable due to his high intelligence. Furthermore, by maintaining a calm and collected composure, it makes him all the more terrifying when he loses this state, creating a true sense of fear that really gets to shine due to his sharp contrast in personality. The status quo of Gus's cool and emotionless demeanor really works in favor of amplifying times where the status quo is breached, therefore creating a greater sense of fear. We specifically see this in times where Gus wants to make an explicit statement in response to Walt's rebellious actions. Oftentimes throughout the series, we see that Gustavo's calculated approach to the drug empire business can be both reassuring for those around him, such as Mike and Victor, as well as nerve-wracking due to them not being able to predict what he's planning next. Specifically, when Victor himself was cold-heartedly and brutally murdered in front of Walter, Jesse, and Mike. We visibly noticed how Gus doing an act out of rashness invoked a significant emotion of shock out of Mike, specifically, a person who never displays emotions, as they believe this action to be one never committed by Gus, due to the familiarity of his usual emotions. Here specifically, Gus had made Victor an example to Walt, for him to visibly bear witness the consequences if he were to ever go against Gus's orders once more, and how despite a long-lasting relationship between Victor and Gus, making Victor's death an example would bear a greater benefit to Gus in showing the established hierarchy of who's the boss here. Therefore, we can see how the status quo being breached emphasizes the stance Gus is taking and creates a greater sense of fear, this example being Walt, Jesse, and Mike. This duality of his cool exterior is seen in his debut episode, where Walter and Jesse are surveyed by Gus's men and their meeting is called off abruptly when Gus realizes that Walter and Jesse could be liabilities. This quick yet rational move to gut their meeting due to him not wanting to take on any form of risk directly alludes to Gus's cunningness and unwillingness to accept loss or defeat, showing how he is always observing and planning out what will be advantageous to himself. On top of all that, it is only after Walter tracks down Gus's place of work and waits to talk to the so-called middleman that Gus is able to quickly take down his public persona to have an intimately intimidating conversation with Walter. This ability to flip-flop between a good cop bad cop persona whose personalities contrast so clearly creates a sense of eeriness amongst the viewers because we don't know exactly what version of Gus we're talking to and when he will flip between each one. This only adds to the reasons as to why Gustavo Fring is such a strong villain throughout the duration of the show's run. Another minor aspect of Fring's cool exterior, which is explored briefly, is Gustavo's life setup, which also further creates more mystery, but more importantly, a menacing aura around the character. Gustavo's home, which is seen in an episode where Walter is invited to dinner, is seen to be very simplistic, yet neatly organized, illustrating how his life setup perfectly mirrors his mind state and vision, one in which he has complete control and agency. This creates an intimidating presence for us, the viewers, which equally shocks Walter. In addition to that, the cleanliness of Gustavo's home also creates this false sense of trust, which is so perfectly manipulated by Vince Gilligan in the creation of the character. By showing how Gustavo is able to open himself up to this level to Walter, it creates an uneasy feeling within viewers as it leaves us questioning whether or not Gustavo is actually being vulnerable with Walter or whether he's setting up some elaborate trap to knock him down. 
In doing so, this constant lack of understanding from the audience in what seems to be a very simplistic man is one of the reasons why Breaking Bad has stood the test of time. It creates memorable characters that are unpredictable, yet basic enough for anyone to understand. Gustavo Fring perfectly exemplifies this mold as he is able to play an innocent role in the public with the persona he has built through his philanthropy and franchising of Los Poyos Hermanos, but his cold and calculated cunning nature is kept under wraps, coming out when you would least expect it, producing a poignant yet sharp villain that keeps not only our protagonists on their toes, but us, the viewers, as well. A lot of characters seem untouchable, sometimes being completely ahead of everyone else. They seem to simply be stronger or smarter than everyone around them, creating a sense of frustration when it comes to dealing with them. However, for these characters to succeed in a story, they must possess one or many fatal flaws, or in other words, an Achilles heel. For those unfamiliar with the story of Achilles, let us explain. Achilles was a hero in Greek mythology, considered to be the greatest of the Greek warriors. His mother had dipped him in the river Styx as a child, which was said to grant powers of invincibility. However, she had held him by the heel when dipping him, meaning a part of his heel had not been dipped into the water and therefore not granted invincibility. Therefore, although Achilles seemed unbeatable, he had one fatal flaw that was eventually exploited. This concept, as you could imagine, has made its way into many modern stories. Some clear examples of this in modern media could be Superman's weakness being kryptonite, symbiotes and Spider-Man being highly vulnerable to extremely loud or high frequency noise, or perhaps a less obvious Achilles heel, like something about a character's mindset that eventually leads them to their own downfall. Since Gus isn't an actual superhero and is instead a human with an incredibly high intelligence and level of rational thought and doesn't need to be physically held back by some sort of weakness, he is instead held back due to his ego and motivation as a villain, creating a perfect and satisfying downfall. As previously explored, Gus's endeavors are not only motivated by money and power, but mainly his desire to seek revenge against the cartel and the Salamanca family. While Gus seemingly comes off as a logical and cold person, we later learn that his motives are probably the most emotional compared to all the other characters. Taking a quick glance, Walter was at first motivated by money to support his cancer treatment, however debatably switches to a more prideful motive to prove himself and his worth. Mike's motive is to leave a hefty sum of money to his granddaughter. We can see some clear logical motives to get roped into the business. However, Gus's motive seems to be of pure emotion. Gus's main focus never really seems to be money or quality of product, but rather pure domination over the cartel and enacting his revenge for his friend. We first see Gus as someone who can do no wrong, as he has no ties and will sacrifice anything and anyone to win. He cannot make a bad move, as there's not much too important to him, and thus will always be one step ahead of Walter, as he is not held back by the same vices Walter is like family and his care for Jesse. This is another aspect of Gus that makes him such a great villain, as the pure domination in their chess-like relationship creates a sense of awe and fear in the audience, since we feel the frustration Walter feels in constantly getting outsmarted by Gus. However, by implementing an Achilles heel for Gus where his motive is exploitable, it opens up the door to an end of a story that makes sense and is not simply due to plot armor. All too many times we have seen overpowered villains lose solely because they must lose for the plot to progress, even if it doesn't make sense logically. To have a villain that seems unbeatable die for random reasons to solely satisfy the plot seems like a way for writers to write their way out of bad plots, but by implementing a fatal flaw that is developed and shown in a villain throughout the story, it instead creates a satisfying and brilliant end to a seemingly undefeatable villain. Specifically, Gus's fatal flaw is his need to enact his revenge and wrath on the Salamancas, specifically Hector, in the worst ways possible. This is what ultimately gets him killed. This is shown very clearly in two instances throughout the Breaking Bad universe. The first and most obvious instance of this is how Gus himself goes to gloat to Hector upon being tricked into thinking Hector is an informant for the DEA by Walt, and refuses Tyrus's offer to do it himself. Gus carelessly taunts Hector, relishing in his moment of superiority, before realizing he was successfully baited by Walter and Hector, resulting in his death. I think everyone watching can agree that this was quite a satisfying way for Gus to go, as it truly felt in character for Gus as we learned that he is actually much more driven by emotions than he seemed to be at first glance. Gus's demise, 
followed by the iconic shot of him missing half of his face, will be remembered as one of the most iconic death scenes of all time, not just because of the incredible visual effects, but also because of the build-up and satisfaction that led up to this crucial moment. The second instance is in Better Call Saul, which gives an even better image of how Gus's flaw leads to his demise. As Gus's flaw is his incessant need to taunt and gloat to Hector Salamanca, the man who killed his best friend, we see how precious Gus holds this action. As touched upon before, when Hector experiences his stroke, Gus is the first one to call for medical attention and try to save Hector's life. With no prior knowledge, it may seem that Gus cares for Hector's well-being. However, knowing what we know, this is clearly a ploy to keep Hector alive for as long as possible to make him undergo the torment and torture that Gus has planned for him. Had Gus ignored his emotions and let Hector die, he would have ironically avoided his own death. However, due to his final flaw, Gus's demise was set in stone the minute Max was shot to death. However, the reason why Gustavo Fring works as a foil in this story is mainly the overlap between his personality and demeanor compared to Walter White. As the antagonist for a large portion of the story, we really see how the business partnership between the two of them creates a convergence in identity, as we see two masters of manipulation and tactics heading up against each other. With a simple viewing of the television show, we can already tell that Walter White and Gustavo Fring are very similar in nature, in terms of their personalities, with both of their motives being based around an emotional ideology, in which both of these characters want to prove themselves to others. Gustavo wants to prove himself and the cartel that he has cemented himself in life by becoming the top of the drug chain, and amassing a comfortable lifestyle he was not given growing up. On the other hand, Walter wants to prove to those around him that he himself is a man, with people that respect and admire him from his partner Jesse Pinkman to his own family. However, the way in which Gustavo Fring really separates himself from Walter White to become a seemingly infallible character is his overall lack of moral restraint compared to Walter's initial moral restraint. Seen in our previous Breaking Bad video, Walter is easily swayed by his desires to build relationships to essentially keep what is blatantly called out by Gustavo as a liability, Jesse Pinkman. Hence, the distinction between Gustavo and Walter is made clear from their first confrontation. Gus is willing to sacrifice anyone to reach his goals, whereas Walter is dependent on closing the business deal with Jesse. This already initially presents the power dynamic as Gus being at an advantage due to him not being held back by his need to preserve relationships with others, and makes us see him as the clear-cut villain of the story while still showing Walter to be a very similar character in actions and motives but having to retain relationships and being a bit more emotionally conserved. This lack of moral restraint, and as such the thematic expression of Gus's differences, is clearly expressed in the box cutter scene where Gus quickly cuts the throat of Victor without a moment's hesitation when he realizes that Walter and Jesse are his sole hope in the moment being and that Victor was seen at the site of Gale's murder. The reason why this scene remains imprinted in the minds of Breaking Bad fans is mainly due to the impromptu nature of the scene. By showing how Gus is so quickly able to bar all of his morals, to change his plan and thinking within a couple of seconds to take out someone who has been loyally working for him for a long time, shows how disconnected Gustavo is from those around him in terms of mentality and strategic planning. However, with this being said, we are not saying that Gus is not an emotional man, because in reality a lot of his motives and actions are based off emotional thinking, as talked about before. Yet, when we see these sudden breaks in character, it only hammers home the idea that he is ultimately playing a longer game than most. This idea of Gustavo Fring being able to play the long game also distinguishes himself from Walter as we can see that throughout the course of Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, Gustavo Fring is very determined in taking control of the drug business while destroying the Salamancas. This constant through line shows that he is very similar to Walt in being driven by his goals and emotions, but is ultimately a better villain due to his ability to weigh what is of value to him relative to others and his ability to prioritize his goals over everything else. Moreover, Breaking Bad perfectly alludes to this indestructible character of Gus by constantly showing how his initial preconceived notions are always right. In hindsight, when we consider Gustavo Fring's initial distraught nature in pursuing a deal with Walter and Jesse, we can see that he is clearly in the right to see the two of them as a liability to his operations. 
but the story makes the perfect choice to allow Gustavo Fring to form a relationship with Walter and Jesse. This counterintuitive action taken by Gus shows how the only person who could destroy Gus is himself, not Walter and Jesse. This small lapse in judgment, which was provoked by an emotional sentiment of wanting to maintain his monopoly on the drug empire after seeing a small reflection of himself in the character of Walter White, leads him down to this destructive path where he loses everything he has built in the meanwhile. Yet, with that being understood, to appreciate the fact that no one else was able to bring Gustavo Fring down other than himself only goes to show how he is such a dominant figure in the show, but only further proves the point why Gustavo Fring might be almost the closest we will ever get to seeing a complete perfectionist of a villain. Additionally, the beauty of Gustavo Fring at a thematic level is that he serves an important role in the story as being what many have already described as the ideal version of Walter White in the meth business. This version of Walter White is the one which prioritizes perfectionism over relationships. Yet even as this ideal depiction of what Walter should have been, we still see how Gustavo is able to succumb to his human desires for vengeance and power, which ultimately leads him to transfer his priorities to his emotions over logical and rational thinking. Thus, when we detach ourselves from the story and re-examine the two characters, we see that Gustavo is ultimately a brilliant foreshadowing tool used by Vince Gilligan to illustrate what can and will happen to Walter if he pursues his ventures by prioritizing his emotions over rational thinking. All in all, the strongly contrasting power dynamics between Gustavo Fring and her protagonists in the show leads to him consistently manipulating and exerting his power onto those around him, creating one of fiction's best villains. In essence, a lot of Fring's characteristics serves as the blueprint for Walter in the final season of Breaking Bad, from his severing of close relationships to violent tendencies, all the way to his downfall mirroring Gustavo's own self-brought-upon demise. However, with all things being considered, Gustavo Fring's actions and mentality is what cements himself as one of pop culture's strongest villains. Even when he may not be as physically imposing, his tactical abilities, his stoic dual personality, and determined means sets himself apart for most villains in great works. Yet, no matter how meticulously he seems to run his operation, the show and Gilligan begs us the viewers to ask a simple question. Will justice, whether in a lawful or unlawful form, always catch up to those who trespass the law? Gustavo Fring may be the perfect villain, but at the end of the day, just like every other character in Breaking bad, Gus still loses it all in the end. Whether it be that he brought that to himself or if it was brought on by others is a question that will persist for a long time.